because I don't know where the cloud goes. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I would zoom. I think they gave you a certain limited amount of space for video recordings. Okay. Well, so. it's recording now, so. Okay. Well, it's you can. Far. Are you going to be here for the whole meeting? Probably, yeah. Okay. If you want to record it when Ken starts his presentation, then we won't have to clip the okay. beginning part of it out. All right. Let's do pause. Okay, we're going. Okay. My voice will be on the recording. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and start. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, October Union County Amateur Radio Club meeting. My name is Ken, W8KWH in Delaware. And we're going to go over the evolution of DMR radio from its very beginnings here at uh, the club and uh, some future things that are in the works. So uh, um, one thing I want to check, uh, is everybody hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah. And the other I'm thing hearing. I wanted to try is, um, sure I'm unmuted. Okay, I'm going to share one screen and make sure my voice is coming through with it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share a screen and talk. So here it comes somewhere. Okay, um, I'm sharing my screen, which is a blank screen right now, and there's a Google screen. Are you still hearing me? Yep. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. And we're ready, ready to roll. Okay. Again, welcome everybody. And uh, oh, about uh, I retired seven years ago, and uh, I decided to get back into ham radio. And I uh, had a little cheap Baofeng radio like we all, all of us have had. And I tuned it up to the 3999 repeater and there wasn't anybody there. And uh, later on I found out they uh, switched to a different frequency and I was able to uh, uh, meet up with Paul and uh, talk to him on the radio. This is a picture of the uh, Baofeng that we all had, the uh, 20 some dollar throwaway radio, UV5R. I think everybody's probably had one of those, but uh, that was the start. And I tried putting it on a uh, L, uh, five element beam to try to hit the Marion or a Marysville repeater, and it was uh, a little touch and go, but uh, it did work. I remember uh, uh, you guys were planning a uh, breakfast over at uh, Goodies, I guess it was, or, you know, I guess that's where it was. And uh, so I decided to go over the meeting, and that's when I first saw Paul after not seeing him for many, many years. I got to meet uh, Arnold and John LVZ and uh, some of the others that were there. So uh, that was the start. And a little bit later on, uh, they decided to form the club up again. So <clears throat> that was the start. <clears throat> Excuse me. UV5R attached to the uh, Marysville 350 repeater. Well, we had a club meeting. I remember uh, Ed called me up and he said, uh, he says, uh, you seen these DMR radios? I says, no, tell me about it. He says, well, I've got one. And Brian, KD8ZWI, he has one. It's kind of neat. I says, yeah. Well, who do you talk to? Well, we can talk to each other on Simplex. Okay. And what else? And then I said, uh, well, you know, you've got DMR, you've got Fusion, you got D-Star. I'm going to wait along the sidelines, just like a lot of us did when VHS and U8 and, uh, and the different uh, video formats, Betamax and all those. I'm going to wait until it settles out and then maybe decide to get into some kind of uh, digital voice like DMR. So I waited. And uh, in the meantime, Ed, uh, for the topic of one of the club meetings, he uh, had uh, Arlen Bradford and Scott Yonley come in. 
and Arlen was working for a two-way shop up in Mansfield, and uh, he, he was going to do a talk on DMR. He brought along a demo of the Hytera digital repeater, which is the same one that we have up right now. And uh, they did a little talk on DMR, and we were all just looking at each other. And what is all this stuff they're talking about? What's 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 Brandmeister? What's you know what's DMR and what's the CDMA and you know what's all this stuff? And what's this little cigar box you have with this little antenna sticking on top of this little uh, water tower? What is that? There's a little blue box underneath it, and uh, that's what it was. It was a Shark RF open spot. I thought, wow, that's kind of neat. I saw one of those up at Mansfield last year. A guy had it on his big table. He had it sitting there, and there was some lights flashing on. I says, what, what is this? He says, it's DMR. I says, oh, okay. So I just proceeded on because I didn't know what the heck it was. But little did I know that uh, when Arlen brought that over, uh, we asked him, I says, what is that blue box? And Arlen says, well, if you're too far away from a repeater, then you can hook up one of these little uh, gateways, tie it into your internet, and you can talk to the Marysville repeater from Delaware, which you're actually too far away to hit from, uh, you know, with your HT. So I thought, okay, that sounds good enough. And so I, I ordered one. Luckily, they had them available uh, statewide, and I think I got mine from HRO. And it was about 200 and forty dollars two hundred thirty dollars something like that but it hooked up to your wi-fi using your cat 45 internet connection you went to a web browser and you programmed some uh, parameters in like your dmr id and things like that call letters and uh, put it on what they call it the brandmeister network which allowed other repeaters that are networked through that uh, brandmeister system to be able to talk to each other Well, along the way, uh, you know, uh, there were uh, MD380s. That was my first DMR radio, and it was around $80, $90. And uh, that was a very popular radio. And I remember uh, uh, Arlen showed to Ed how to program uh, uh, the, the new repeater that he just installed. Fortunately, we had a repeater pair on UHF. And so they pulled that out and dropped this high terror repeater in. And uh, Arlen had it already programmed with our, uh, our call and stuff. And uh, had Ed's uh, MD380 and uh, programmed it. And he was on the air. So I thought, that's, that's really neat. If I'm too far away, I can, I can get one of these little blue uh, shark open spots. So I ordered one. Had to wait for you know a week or so to get it. Fortunately, because uh, later on, the shark open spots are from the, uh, oh, somewhere in the Netherlands, I think, or across the uh, pond, and you have to order it, and it takes a while to get it. So I was excited to get it, and uh, it was fairly intuitive. And so I got one of those. I thought, that, that's really nice, but what if I want to use it in the uh, car? Uh, and later on, I'll show you uh, some of the options that we're doing. But the MD380 was one of the most popular radios. It got you into DMR at a very low cost of entry. Uh, later on, people wanted a radio that was a dual band so they could use it on the analog 350 repeater. So they came out with one was an MD2017, and then they came out with a successor to it, which was a MD UV380, a little smaller. Paul has one of them. And you can set it up for uh, VHF, so you can hit the uh, analog repeater. You could program in the EMA frequency, and if you were a member, uh, you could actually talk through that radio. As well as uh, most uh, DMR is set up on the UHF band, and that's what our repeater was uh, set up on, UHF, the uh, repeater pair that Joe already had. Uh, later on, just recently, uh, Within the last couple of years, there was a model called a GD77 Radioddity. And Ed has one of those, and I have several of them. And uh, that was another dual bander that was fairly economical. But it had some uh, special firmware uh, by a guy named Roger Clark over in Australia that lets you do a lot of things from the front panel. 
I know Joe's got one and uh, uh, there's several of them out there. But that was a DD77, still dual band and had the neat software. You can just key in a talk group right from the front panel. And the, uh, the big one in this day and age is uh, the most deluxe version. In fact, Bob, NAGU, uh, gave his UV380 to his uh, nephew down in Orlando, and he bought the new Anytone 878 Plus with Bluetooth and GPS. It has tremendous audio. It has a uh, remote push to talk button, which Bob uses in his uh, RV or his net, and superb audio quality. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of those around. I have one, and uh, uh, the predecessor was the 868, which uh, wasn't quite as good, but uh, that was what the predecessor was. I mentioned to you after I had my uh, MD380 and I wanted to take it mobile, there are all these people building up these little boxes with the shark, uh, first shark open spot. And what you see there is the MD380 to the left, the shark open spot. To the top right is a, a router which lets you uh, connect uh, to any Wi-Fi point, whether you have your Wi-Fi turned on your iPhone or Android phone, or if you had a car with GM Wi-Fi, or you're just at home, your home Wi-Fi. That would let you use wireless on the shark. <coughs> then underneath it is a battery. And once that is all powered up, you can carry that anywhere you'd like. I remember I used a little uh, ammo box, a little plastic ammo box from uh, from uh, Harbor Freight. And I remember going over to the one of the Der Dutchman breakfasts uh, for Madison County. And I would really wasn't thinking too much, but uh, I ran out to the car because they wanted to know more about that. So here I come walking in with this little plastic ammo box into Der Dutchman. Fortunately, nobody stopped me because they didn't know what was in that box. Was it really ammo or what was going on? And, uh, but that was kind of cumbersome and haul all that stuff around just so you could talk on DMR through your phone. So you had this box and your phone and you're connected on the air. Uh, you could also connect it up without the battery if you want to hook it up to your car's 12 volt, you can do a five volt adapter and uh, you can still use the, the router. Well, later on, they came out with this next version. It was called a Jumbo Spot. MMDVM is the uh, generic name. And even Amazon sells them now as well as r &L for about 100 bucks. I know Ron has one just like that. And uh, that had built-in Wi-Fi. So that eliminated another piece of the puzzle. Because it'll pick up the Wi-Fi off your phone and not have to have that router. And boy, was that a, a revelation. It was smaller. I built some of those up with a little battery pack that Paul had one or two of those, and John had one. And, and uh, so it made it a little bit more convenient. I remember I, I met up with a ham up in Mansfield uh, three, three years ago, and he was just fed up with the whole thing. He says, you know, I've got this MD2017, which is a big DMR radio. I've got this battery. I've got this router. I've got this little blue shark open spot. I got to carry all that around just to be able to talk on this radio. So he sold everything. He sold me the radio. He sold somebody else the open spot. And he just had had it because of all the stuff you have to carry around. So uh, that was the, uh, uh, the start of a, a new revolution, this MMDVM. Plus, it cost a fraction. You could uh, build or buy two or three of these little... Uh, gateways, as they're called, for the price of one shark open spot. I know Paul sold his, I sold mine, Joe sold his, because if you could get better functionality with Wi-Fi, you know, why would you want to keep the other one? But uh, the shark was a good product. It was a pioneer, and uh, I still have one. In fact, John LVZ's uh, shark open spot is still powered up in his room. So uh, it's kind of a memorial there, I guess. Okay, that was the MMDVM. Now, Shark has the Open Spot 3. And this gets even better. It has the uh, battery built in. It has the uh, uh, Wi-Fi connection. 
You can just put it in your pocket. You still have to have your phone or a Wi-Fi source. But that's the current one. It sells for about $240. And uh, I've seen some of these MMDVM hotspots with nice big displays on it, like Joe has and I have, that are selling for $300. They don't do any more. It's just you know, a little more eye candy, bells and whistles. Um, and then now comes the revolution. Instead of having to have all those pieces, and a lot of people say, well, I'd like to try DMR out, but I don't want to spend a lot of money. You know, if I buy an MD380 for a hundred bucks, I still need to uh, either get a hotspot or are fortunate enough to live close to the repeater. Well, they have this little uh, thing called a thumb DV. And what this is, is a vocoder that will do the translation from your normal analog into uh, digital like DMR, it'll do fusion and D-Star. And that, that's uh, something that uh, can be used in other places too. And uh, that leads us to the current state of the art. This is a project uh, I'm a beta tester on. Gary K E A O O is also. That's just my Galaxy S8 phone that has uh, either 4G LTE or it taps into my Wi Fi. Uh, over here, this is a Pi 3B. Plus, I guess. And it does run a little warmer, so there's a fan on it. And I plugged in this uh, DB thumb drive, which low codes for D Star. And with this program here, uh, you set up this is what, what is called a server, and you attach that to your network. I have it attached with CAT45. And uh, you put an application on your phone called DB Switch Mobile. And Ed was using that long before this DV switch came around because he used it to tie into his all-star node. So this will also do uh, uh, analog uh, all-star and I can get into uh, Ed's repeater. And I think that's how uh, a lot of people have done that. And, but this is where we're at right now. And this is something for the future. Now I know um, I've talked to a lot of people and I've set some jumbo spots up for people and uh, the first question I asked, do you want to be an appliance user or do you want to be a power user? And there's nothing wrong with either extent. Uh, an appliance user is, you know, just key the radio up and talk. You know where to set the, the, the talk group channel and away you go. Or do you want to delve into the underhood of the, uh, the engine that makes it work, like uh, how to set up a uh, jumbo spot? Now, unlike the jumbo spot that Ron and everybody and all of us have, there's no Pi hat on there. In other words, no RF board. This is just a plain Pi 3B. And the software lets this serve to the internet, a program called DB Switch. And this is going to revolutionize a lot of things because, you know, you have a lot of people that uh, don't want to spend a lot of money to get into it. And then again, you have some people that spent too much money. They go out and get the top of line uh, Fusion uh, mobile transceiver and a 991A, and they get all this expensive Fusion stuff. And what do they have? They have a Fusion uh, Ohio Link radio that uh, pretty much you just talk to the people on Ohio Link. So uh, with this device here, you can get on to Fusion. You can get on to uh, D Star if you have this little dongle. If you don't, you can still get on all the other modes. You can get on to DMR, you can get on to uh, D. Uh, Fusion, you can get on to P25 and NX20, NXDN. But uh, that, that's where we're at right now. Next, uh, and I'm going to give uh, these PDFs to Ed. He can go ahead and post them after the meeting. These are just some general terms. You know, I know when we were sitting there with Arlen Bradford and Scott Yonley, he was throwing all these things out, and our, everybody's head was just spinning, you know. He says, oh, yes, uh, these um, repeaters, the high tiers, they're affiliated with a uh, Brandmeister network. Okay, what does that mean? Well, there's a computer server that Brandmeister has all over the world called a master server. And, in fact, I just looked up recently, there's now 4,400 Brandmeister repeaters. And get this, 14,000 hotspots. That's like the uh, jumbo spots and the open spots. This number has really ballooned because of the popularity of these inexpensive devices. 
And so that's what the Brandmeister network is. It's the internet connection of these physical repeaters. So they're linked and you can talk to anybody, anywhere, any country, all over the world. Uh, just recently, within the last several years, uh, there's an alternative network called TGIF. They used to be on Brandmeister till they were run off. QRM is another new wet network. These are all on independent servers so that uh, they're not affiliated at all with Brandmeister, cannot even talk to Brandmeister. There's some pros and cons for that, but uh, uh, that's the state that we're in right now. In you know, other words, people always wonder about what's this code plug business? I hear a lot of fusion people say, you know, DMR is so difficult. You got to write this code plug. You got to put it in three different places. You got to do all this just to make the radio work. It's not like a fusion radio. You just put the frequency in and you're on whatever repeater that's already linked up to Ohio link. Well, that's just one, uh, well, they call it a room to us. It's just one talk group. It doesn't allow you to contact to statewide Florida or statewide uh, Kansas or whatever you're pretty much locked into all the same old people that are on that network. If you do want to go to uh, another room, it's kind of discouraged. In fact, the uh, uh, fusion repeater in Columbus is locked down where you can't change the room because they've had too many people that would put it on a very busy room called AmeriLink and they couldn't get in to disconnect it. So, you know, you're at their mercy. And uh, so that's where the hotspots come in, because that's basically your gateway to the internet. Think of it as a mini repeater. And it will allow you to uh, go anywhere on the internet, go to any talk group. And with the uh, PyStar software, you can even make it talk to YSF Fusion. You can make it talk to uh, uh, DMR, you know, not DMR, but uh, uh, P25 and XDM, I believe. I'm not sure. But anyway, at least it lets you talk to other places. There's uh, bridging that stuff built into it. In fact, that new Shark open spot that I just showed you that the, it's the latest, it will actually let you do all the bridging, including DSTAR, NXDM, P25, DMR, and Fusion, all on that one little box. And it could be well worth its price, but uh, once you uh, get a load of this new DB switch server, it, it does everything. By the way, that little box that I built using a Pi 3B, which you can get at Micro Center for about $40, and you get an SD card for about uh, $4, and you get a little case for it, and you can download an image off the internet. And the, the new release is coming uh, sometime later this month. You'll have all the bells and whistles and all the fixes, which uh, we've been all beta testing. Uh, there's a group of about six or seven. But this project, the DB Switch, uh, was a brainchild of these two brothers down in Florida, Georgia, the Zingman brothers. And uh, they've collaborated with Joe, W8RIK, down in Columbus, one of the uh, friends of Gary's and mine. And there's a guy named Waldeck over in Poland that does a lot of programming. There's a guy, Ken, in Tobaccoville, North Carolina, that does a lot of the Python stuff with uh, the Python client. For You can also use it on Windows. Uh, Linux and uh, and Mac uh, Macintoshes. Now, unfortunately, the mobile client called DB Switch Mobile is only available on Android. It's just too hard to get it on to uh, Apple iOS. Now, there's been some people, uh, including Joe. He picked up my uh, used uh, Note 3 that I had uh, replaced. There's a guy on the QRM network. He did the same thing. He ordered one off of. Uh, eBay, I think he got it for like uh, $45, 50 It was in superb condition. But he was an iOS Apple person, and so he got that. He's just going to use it around the house on wireless. So uh, other than that, if you have any other device, you might have an Android tablet. It'll work on that. So anyway, we have uh, all these confusing terms like the uh, code plug, you know, and there's just three basic things. I remember right after the Trunk Fest two years ago, three years ago, Bob, N-A-G-U, who was a, a D-Star man, he said he wanted to know more about uh, DMR. And I was so happy and proud how he, well, he picked it up because he was coming from one mode with an open mind. And there's just three uh, basics to writing a code plug. You create a contact. In other words, you name 
the contact and put whatever the uh, uh, the contacts uh, DMR information like uh, Marysville's uh, 313966. And then you create uh, the channel information, which says, this is a frequency I want to use it on, Mary Soul's repeater. And this is the uh, where I want it to go to. I want it to talk to Mary Soul 66. And you put in uh, a couple other things called color code and time slots. Third part is you take that information and you put it in a zone. I want to put Marysville in my uh, local zone. I want to put in statewide Ohio 3139 there. You can even put an analog repeater in there if you wanted to. And that's all there is to writing a code plug. And, and Bob picked that up in that one session. We spent two hours after Trunk Fest. And I also taught him how to set up and program a jumbo spot. And away he went. I mean, he is uh, uh, the epitome of somebody that had an open mind. I just got an email from him last week, and he wants to know about YSF Fusion. And I says, well, I'm getting ready for this meeting, and I'll, I'll get with you after you know, after Wednesday, we can go over that. So uh, he's very open-minded about it. He's getting ready to go back down to Florida, too. Um, DMR, everybody knows that's what we're on. Uh, we've talked about these spot or D hot spots. And uh, the radio ID, uh, Dean finally applied today and got his, uh, his uh, official copy of his license uh, uploaded, as well as his uh, call letters, and they will be sending him a confirmation email and he'll click on a link and that'll confirm that uh, he is a, the uh, amateur radio licensee. And then you have DMR talk groups. You know, the Marysville talk group is 313966. Uh, Delaware's 310385. Marion's 313964. And the neat thing about Brandmeister is uh, if you have a Brandmeister repeater, you can put any talk group in that's uh, assigned or you can even make up one. And the same way with a jumbo spot or a hot spot, those are all Brandmeister affiliated uh, initially when they're first set up. And uh, it lets you, uh, without getting any coordination or approval from anybody, you can set up your own talk group, unlike some of the competing plans uh, that you have to uh, make a request. Uh, AWRL, they have a, an Ohio Brandmeister talk group. And I've got these links on another sheet that will be on the uh, web. And these are uh, hyperlinks. You can click on them. It will take you right to your browser and open up uh, that. But they have a full uh, digital page of all kinds of stuff on DMR. And it gives you a lot of the common ones for the state, like uh, uh, 3139, uh, 4 is uh, local 2 in Cincinnati. and there's the uh, statewide weather, 3139, I think it's two, I believe. But there's, these are all the Brandmeister approved uh, talk groups. And there's all a host of a lot of other ones like uh, national things like 3100, which is a uh, nationwide. There's a 93 talk group, which is uh, North American, 91. I mean, there's just an endless amount. And I've seen some people uh, <clears throat> switch over to these talk groups because uh, they basically like to talk to all these people all over the world. So uh, that, there's a lot of information on the AWR Ohio site, which there is a link on that uh, page. This is what the page looks like. Uh, it'll have a copy. But the first one's the DMR ID. This tells you how to go there and uh, get the uh, process started. If you need a copy of your official license, this takes you right to the place where you put in, and then you'll click you want an official license. Normally, if you click on the other link, it'll just give you one that says reference copy, which uh, won't work. You have to have one that says official. If you forgot your FRN number, there's a link to get your FRN number. Uh, the other thing with uh, the early days of our club, when we had the uh, repeater up on the 350, I would go to a ham fest. I remember being up in Toledo, and I called back to talk to Paul. And I was on my uh, Echo Link on my uh, Android phone, and I was able to talk to him. Unfortunately, it was very noisy in the room. And I was in a steel uh, building, and so the signal, cell signal wasn't real good. But that was the only way we could communicate when we were far beyond the uh, reaches of the repeater. Um, that's the AWRL site. 
There's another uh, neat program called Peanut. And this Peanut, uh, I'll show you later what you can do with that. Uh, this is by far probably the cheapest way to get on some of the digital modes that you can actually talk on. Uh, DroidStar is a receive-only Android program that you can actually get and listen to the Ohio link. You can listen to uh, just anywhere you can get on, uh, on uh, YSF Fusion. You can get uh, Marysville 66. You can get 3139. And it's a neat program. It doesn't cost anything. It's on the uh, Play Store. And again, it's Android only. Uh, I just threw this one in. Uh, Joe and I use this quite often. It's Kiwi SDR and it's the public, and you'll go to this slide, site and you can actually click on a map and find out where the different receivers are. There's some up there in Cleveland, Cincinnati, Lima. There's a couple good ones in Indiana and Pennsylvania, but if you like to listen to HF and you don't have a good antenna, these guys have a good setup. And you can listen in, you can spin the dial, you can uh, change bands, and it's free. And the last link is for that thumb DV device. Uh, if you got one of those, you can use a program, and I'll show you later on the browser. It's called uh, Blue DV for Windows. You plug that into a laptop and configure the, uh, the software, and you can go anywhere on the uh, internet with uh, DMR, Fusion, B25, and XDN, as well as DSTAR, since you have the thumb DV. It's called a vocoder. So that's the links I'll be on the, the web page. And I mentioned Echolink. If you just want to get back into the repeater, you know, I know I've heard of all the, 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 the people say throughout the years, and I've had my Echolink tied to the repeater probably for four or five years, 24-7. Uh, kind of interesting enough, I'm sorry, I hit the mic. I talked to Don, WADPK of Madison County, and uh, he had some club members that were snowbirds down in Florida. One guy was actually in a nursing home, Don Lefevre. And uh, he wanted to get back in and talk to those guys on their Tuesday night net. So I was able at the time to pick up uh, the uh, repeater over there uh, in Madison County. And I linked my echo link on Tuesday nights. And when Bob NAG was down in Florida, or Don, he could get in there and uh, participate on the Tuesday night uh, Madison County net. Well, finally, Word got out that Don was going to go ahead and put an echo link on his repeater. And I know it's hard for him to do, and so uh, it's up and it's running very well. Uh, very good clarity. Anywhere you can uh, get on your phone, either 4G LTE or uh, from your Wi-Fi. And it does have an echo link app on uh, Apple as well as uh, Android, so you can use it either place. Hitting that mic. Uh, but basically, what Echolink is, is just linking through the internet. I'm using a TMD V71 here. I'm receiving a signal on this transceiver going into my computer. It's sending it off into the internet. And then somebody uh, uh, can log into the internet using uh, Echolink. So if you just want to listen to the 350 repeater, that's one way to do it. And it's been around for a long time. And that takes us back to the UV5R. So that's where it all started. Now I'm going to take a break here. Uh, I've got some other things to go through. But at this point, I'm going to break and uh, we'll open it up for any questions you might have over what we just shared. And so I'm going to turn my sharing off, close this thing out. And let's see. Figure out how to shut that off. Okay, yeah, I need my zoom back on. There we go. Okay, my sharing's off, and we'll open it up for any questions. Uh, go ahead. Uh, who wants to be first? Ken, the the D, DV switch server you're using now is is that on the market? You said you were doing testing with it. Um, the components are on the market. Go down to Micro Center or Amazon and order a Pi 3B or 3B Plus. That's the current one. And then we're, we're going to open up. There'll be some links on GitHub, or I can personally send you the link with uh, complete PDF instructions. And you take and burn that uh, image uh, on either a Windows or a Mac. 
you use a program called uh, Bellina Etcher, and that will create a bootable uh, image on a little 32 gig uh, micro USB uh, card. The card's four bucks. Make sure you get a class 10. And uh, once you burn that image, you stick it in the Pi and uh, hook it to your internet. That's probably the easiest way. Just hook it to your router with a cap 45. You can hook it up with wireless, but it, so it takes a little extra effort. And once you boot it up, it'll take you through a series of menus that will let you put in, uh, you know, who you are, where you're at, what uh, your DMR ID and uh, all the pertinent information. And then uh, you'll hit finish and it'll restart your uh, Pi 3. And then you need to download the free application on Android called uh, DB Switch Mobile. Now, if you don't have a, a, a DM, uh, Android device, you can put it on a tablet. Push comes to shove, you can buy a used uh, uh, Android phone like uh, Joe did, or you could put a what they call a Python universal client on either a Mac or a uh, Windows 10 machine and do everything from the laptop. So. Uh, and everything's free except you have to buy the Pi 3, which is around $40, $45. The card's 4 bucks, and uh, a case, whatever you like. But uh, it's going to revolutionize everything because why would you want to go out to get onto YSF Fusion and spend $450 for an FTM 400, $1,200 for an FTM 991A for a base unit, uh, $350 for a FT3D, it's a nice radio, very good quality, just to get on the Fusion and find out you don't like it. So uh, the Stevie Switch will give you that. If you want to talk to Bob and his people on D-Star, you can do that too. Now, if you want to go on D-Star, you need that little thumb DV thing. Which this group over in the Carolinas, about uh, eight of us, and we're all in our 70s. And... Uh, we're all into this tech, and the, the uh, talk group they have on QRM Network is called Tech Talk. And we'll be on there for hours throughout the day and the evening. There's some early risers, and there's some late birds like me. And it has taken the place, and I, I brought over one of my uh, uh, DMR guys from Cincinnati, and he, he's joined in with us. But uh, uh, if you like to listen in on that, just download that peanut app. It's free. Uh, you do have to uh, register it. You know, so they know you're uh, an amateur licensed uh, operator, and it doesn't take long. But uh, it's kind of a neat group because uh, we all talk tech. And I told Paul about it. He said, well, I, I feel kind of awkward. I said, we don't talk just about tech. We talk about life. We talk about a lot of medical since we're all old timers. <laughs> and uh, it's just a, a whole new group of people. But that's the same way. You know, Bob has his group of D-Star people. Gary has his group of... Uh, Fusion people, and they all have their place. They're all good systems, but this DB switch is going to revolutionize uh, digital voice for everybody. So, uh, next question: Is that okay, Ron? Oh, that's great. Now, is this? You said you have a PDF with all that information. Or is it going to be available on the the, the website? Yeah, I'll put I'll put links on the website once the uh, final uh, public copy is released. This beta has okay. been happening for about uh, four months now. There's a guy in Columbus, uh, a friend of Gary's and mine, uh, Joe, W-8-R-I-K. Sometimes you'll hear him on the 6-6 uh, six, six, uh, DMR repeater. And he wrote the documentation initially, and then he handed it over to somebody else because he's got some uh, eyesight problems. It was just too, too tough for him to, to finish it. So, But it's so complete, it'll take you from uh, somebody who has no knowledge at all because what happened six months ago, they came out with sort of a, an automatic install. And I laid off of it because these guys have been working on DV Switch for over a year. And uh, they put out these instructions. Well, you got to take this package off of GitHub. You got to run this script and you got to do this. And then you got to retrieve another package. I said, I don't have the patience for that. And so this guy up in Korea, his name is also Joe. That's his last name. Speaks perfect English. And he says um, to uh, Joe, W-8-R-I-K, and Worthington, he says, hey, I can automate all those. I can write you scripts that does all this stuff, and it'll all be menu-driven. And boy, did that make it nice. The uh, 
original install would take uh, somebody with a lot of effort two to three hours to get up and running. Now to install the server software and get your phone up and running, it takes maybe a half an hour. It's just amazing. These guys, the Zingman brothers, they're professional programmers. They have real jobs, but boy, are they, they know their stuff. And they kept on bringing people in that knew their stuff. It was a big collaboration. It's all open source. So uh, that's the beauty of it. Next question. Hey, got a quick question for you, Ken. Would you recommend getting a, a Pi 4 or a Pi 3B plus? Well, the Pi 4, uh, it'll load the, uh, load the uh, image quicker, but right now it takes three minutes to load the image, unlike uh, previously. And the Pi 4 does run hot. You definitely need a fan on the uh, board on, above it and maybe uh, another fan blowing across it. Uh, about 48.8 degrees centigrade is the uh, point where it starts going into uh, getting a little warm. Of those, I wouldn't put it on a Pi Zero. Uh, it's just uh, it probably tax it too much. But once it's up and installed, it'll run. But uh, there's uh, plus it doesn't have Cat 45. Uh, once you get into the setup, you can install the uh, wireless SSID and passwords if you want to use it wirelessly. So all these guys that I talked to down there on the QRM net, they're big time Pi Star users, and. Uh, Raspberry Pi, they, they build for everything. One guy has a NAS set up with a, a Raspberry Pi. And they have some of these um, uh, cases from C4. They make actually a server case that, uh, that's about 70 bucks that will hold uh, four or five uh, Raspberry Pis with, uh, no, hold eight of them, and it has four fans. That's kind of intriguing. Uh, if you have a lot of pies set up, I know I've got a lot now. I've got one set up for that internet radio that I was telling you about, Ed. And then I've got a uh, Fusion uh, jumbo spot. I've got a DMR jumbo spot. I've got my DB switch jumbo spot. And uh, if I had, a, if I wanted to, I could build up a Raspberry Pi as a YSF. Anybody can have a YSF reflector that's tied into uh, Fusion. And you can even interlink that over to Wires X if you, uh, you know, were into uh, Fusion. So it's just uh, the, one of the things that us guys have is, and we do this all the time. Says, man, he says, there's so much food on the table. It's like a buffet. You just don't know where to start. Go ahead, there, Ed. Okay. Next question. Okay, let me uh, continue on with this uh, next segment. I'm going to share my screen, which will be my browser, and I'm going to go over some of these links. Uh, I know I, I told you, Ed, that one of the hardest things I had was trying to find the, how to navigate to the FCC to get it to the point where you can get an official copy. You know, we've all done it once or twice, but then you try to remember, how did I do that? So that's why I made up this sheet that has these links. So let me go ahead and turn... Uh, screen sharing on and I'll uh, bring my browser up. Screen. Okay, here's the browser. And, uh, you know, uh, when I talked to Paul uh, on his uh, DMR through his uh, Jumbo Spot, he always wonders how I'm able to uh, figure out uh, he was on the air. Well, every time you key up, well, there he is. Every time you key up uh, a Brandmeister hotspot, it gives you the activity. And I have mine set up to monitor a whole bunch of different talk groups. There's N8IG, N8XE. Oh, that's Jason. I wonder why Jason. Jason, join our, uh, our uh, meeting. And then 3139 Statewide Ohio, there's me, W8KWH. But anytime somebody clicks up, it'll go into red and show, uh, you know, they're on the air. So this is just one of the uh, things that's uh, it's called Pi Star. It's on the uh, jumbo spots. Uh, 
Zum spots, you know, Zum makes one out of HRO. Gives you a lot of status and also gives you your CPU temperature. And this one's running in the green, which is below 120 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. But I have this one set up to do a lot of different things. I can even get into YSF. So uh, that's how I see what's going on. Uh, the next step is uh, I talked to Dean before the meeting started. He said he went in ahead of register. And this is kind of confusing on the radioid.net. You know, where do you get your ID at? Well, you, you hit register. And then you go to the bottom. You say, uh, I agree to whatever they want you to say. And you hit a register account. And that's where you enter your information in your call. Your email address, they send you a confirmation. Make up a password in the country you're in. And then hit the uh, CAPTCHA, I'm not a robot, and create the account. And that'll uh, fire into uh, Radio ID, and then they'll send you an email. You'll click on the link, and then uh, you'll, they'll tell you what your uh, ID number is. There's only need to get one ID. Uh, I think a lot of us already have DMRs, uh, have that, but you don't need multiple ones if you have more than one radio. Just one ID is sufficient. And then... Uh, Lots of people forgot what their FRN number is. If you go to this link here, license search, if you put in your call, <laughs> terrible sound, and that'll take us to a, a page on the FCC site. It's thinking, there it is, and it gives my call, my name, and my FRN number. You can either copy that or and use for copy and paste, or you can just write it down. Probably should write it down in your little book of all the uh, accounts and passwords that you have. I'm sure we all have that uh, little book. I know I made one up. Uh, I told my daughter I ordered one off of Amazon. And the, the title on the front of the uh, little uh, book was, I'm Dead, Now What? And that's a book that uh, I told my daughter about. Mine doesn't have that saying on the front. But uh, I said, if you ever need to get into any of my accounts, passwords and stuff, uh, this is the book to lead. So nothing's worse when somebody passes away and not know how to get into their computer. Okay, once you have your FRN number, hit the one that's called License Manager, and that's where you put your FRN number in. You can just copy and paste it. Uh, and you should have a password for uh, your uh, FRN. Uh, that's just your normal login for your FRN. You hit Submit, and then it'll take you to a page thinking. By the way, I'm doing this on a Chromebook. And it says uh, right here, download your official electronic authorization now. And you'll click that. And they're going to send to your downloads folder. Uh, I guess they want some other thing. And uh, they'll send that to you and you'll have official PDF of your license. And that's what you need like if you register for Echolink, you need a copy of that license. If you register for uh, Radio ID, you need that. Um, I don't think you need to have it for Peanut. You just need your uh, call. So uh, the next tab is Echolink. This is something that's been around a long time. And uh, you can put it on a laptop or you can put it on your uh, Apple phone or Android phone. Uh, this is the... Uh, the computer software. The other uh, Echo Link you'll get on your uh, Apple Play Store or uh, Android Play Store, which whatever they call that. So that's for the Echo Link, and and uh, you can even get on the Madison County. Uh, they have an Echo Link, really works good. So eventually, now that we're getting fiber real close to uh, uh, ready at the uh, new station 720, then we can get the Echo Link tied right into the repeater right at the site and get all the benefits of a better signal and less noise. Now, I mentioned to you earlier, this is called uh, PET. And uh, this guy is over in, in the Netherlands, David, PA7LIM. And he's been developing this uh, group of software for many years. But then about two or three years ago, he said he had to, he had to drop this because he was spending too much time. And so he simplified things a lot. And now he's back at it hitting it hard, so I don't know how he resolved his uh, too much time effort. But Peanut is an application you put on an Android phone, and you can also put on a Windows 10. 
you just click the peanut thing, you scroll down, shows you what it looks like on a, a Windows machine and on an Android device. But this will allow you to talk and receive. Uh, you can also use it with those net phones, uh, of which uh, Gary has one, I have one, and uh, that's uh, another uh, another uh, thing on the table, another food uh, dessert. And you go down here, and there's a place where you can uh, request your peanut approval ID number, and they'll send you an email with it. And there's also uh, the links to get to uh, the Android app or the Windows app. And it lets you install it on either one of those devices. But Peanut's kind of nice. That was uh, one of his first projects. And then I also mentioned if you if you bought one of those Northwest Digital, uh, uh, take you to a link there, Northwest Digital. This is out of, uh, I think, California or Seattle or something. And you can order this uh, uh, digital vocoder. It's 119.95 now, and it can be used with either uh, BlueDB or uh, you can use, use it later on for your uh, DB switch server. But I'll tell you, you just can't beat that DB switch server for the cost. So uh, we'll go back to Peanut, and they have a place here in the called Blue. You click on that, and that's a software that'll run on your Windows machine, right there, Windows. It'll run on a Linux box. It'll run on iOS or Plain Linux or Android. Android's over there. So these are the, the different, they're not just pictures, but they're actually links that'll take you to how you select what operating system you're on. You'll install that. And there's just a couple setups you need to set up in the uh, folders. But uh, you have to have the thumb DB to use this blue DB software, whereas on Peanut, you don't have to have it. So if you want to get a taste of it, you can go into the Peanut. And I also have some uh, live things you can see on that. So let's see where we're at. Uh, of course, you can get a lot of stuff off Amazon. Uh, the TYT radios, you can get the Anytones, you can get jump spots, or you can go to HRO and they have the very same thing. They have more markup. And uh, County. Yeah. everybody asks, what is Brandmeister? Well, Brandmeister is the network that we're on. I mentioned to you there's two alter, uh, alternative networks called TGIF. They have their own uh, uh, home page and same way with uh, QRM that shows activity. This is uh, currently what it looks like. This is where I got the amount of repeaters and the amount of hotspots that are currently online. And so uh, it looks like uh, 22 hours ago, Ed, K-E-A-N-U, was on. He was uh, dialing up uh, Marion 313964. He had an S9 signal into the uh, uh, KJWL repeater, so that's a good signal. And occasionally you'll see other people in here. So occasionally you'll see somebody in there, you don't even know how in the world or who they are. So, uh, and also if you click on this little hotspot button, you can survey what hotspots are online. So lots of times if I'm looking for Paul, I'll just uh, click on uh, N8IG and it'll tell me if his home hotspots on, or if there's mobile hotspots on, or both. I've even put in K8 uh, uh, LVZ, and his open spot still shows. Uh, I'm waiting for it to populate. Now there's 14,000 hotspots. It takes a while for it to populate before you can do the search. I can put Ed's in, I can put Joe's in, or mine, or find out if anybody, uh, maybe you might know, has a hotspot. Page unresponsive. Well, I guess it's too much uh, traffic on here right now, so we'll uh, get away from that page. But that's what Brand is about. It, oh, there it is. Now, if I type in hit that mic again, N eight I G, it's still searching. Eventually, it'll come up. It's, it's searching for fourteen thousand entries. Doesn't take as long as repeaters uh, to sort through there. It tells you what firmware they're running, what kind of a hotspot they're running. Yeah, it's a good way to attract somebody. I'll show you some st really neat stuff later uh, that they've done with this DB switch uh, dashboard. Okay. 
it's clogged up. It's probably my internet connection with this uh, Chromebook. So we'll get out of that and see what else I have on my tabs. Uh, and of course, you can always go to YouTube. There's all kinds of uh, things on DMR, uh, how to build them, what kind of radios. Uh, this one, one radio here is a thousand dollar radio. It's a VHF UHF, and it has an Android phone in it and an Android device that you can run RF Finder in it. And you don't need to write a code plug. You just scroll down to what you want to find and uh, uh, highlight it and key up. You're on it. But that's a thousand dollar radio. So, but there's all kinds of uh, DMR things uh, for beginners, uh, how to build things, and other things that may have DMR references into them. So, if you're looking for something good, there are all kinds of videos. So, we'll go back to the home page. And uh, last thing I'll go over with. This is dragging on. It's almost an hour. Okay. Uh, you know, hear all the people saying this is not really ham radio, but the way uh, us guys on QRM, we talk, you know, it's ham radio operators talking to ham radio operators with the assistance of the Internet. And when you can find a person, I, I talked to Don when he got back from vacation from the Outer Banks the other day. I've been trying him on the Echo Link. He says, yeah, we just got back on. I saw you uh, logging into my Echo Link. And he says, yeah, I was just checking to see if it worked. I even talked to Ed on it. And uh, I says, uh, he said, what have you been up to? And I said, I'm on this uh, DB switch uh, internet uh, beta testing. He said, oh, you know how I feel about that. I says, yeah, but you know, it does serve a purpose. You have it now, Echo Link, on your, uh, on your uh, repeater. And you can get Bob down in Florida, Don down there at the nursing home down there. And they're able to talk to the guys they used to know. Don was their past president years and years ago. So it does serve a purpose. Uh, and whether you're just a plan appliance user, you just want to key up the radio, care less how it works, you can do that. If you take one of the Pi 3Bs, it can be configured for you. You just plug it in your network. It gets a DHCP and uh, logs into the network, and uh, we can tell you what. Uh, there's only one thing you have to do. You have to port forward uh, whatever port it's set up on in your router. And then you uh, load the uh, DB switch mobile to your uh, uh, Android device, and uh, you can talk the world with that. So, uh, and there's a lot of competing systems, you know, C4FM, which is uh, uh, by Yesu. There's two things under that. YSF, which is a uh, connection to uh, Yesu, but Wires X is a Yesu thing only. They can be bridged over so the two can talk to each other. I guess it's not too hard. One of the guys down there on QRM Tech Talk, he, uh, actually set it up. You take a Raspberry Pi, of course, and uh, run this software, Linux software, and you can set up a reflector, even if you don't have a wireless X room. And then you have D-Star, which ICOM and Kenwood support. And all those radios, the ICOM and Kenwood, are very expensive radios. So with this uh, evolution of uh, DB Switch Mobile and DB Switch Server, boy, you got the, the world in your hands at a fraction of the cost. Um, one of the things, uh, operating etiquette on DMR, you still have to ID every uh, 10 minutes, even though uh, when you key up, your ID is also translated into your call signs. But you still have to ID and just use common sense, friendly operating procedures. You know, uh, don't quick key, leave room for people to get in. I know they get very upset about that over on Ohio Link on Fusion because uh, a lot of people are listening into that network. And you get somebody in there rag chewing for an hour or they switch it off to a Maryland, you just, they just lose control of the repeater. So that's why they do some of the things they do. But if you have a hotspot, no worry, it's your repeater. And uh, most of the things have timeout timers. So if you get somebody windy like me, uh, it'll shut you off and beep at you. So uh, that's all I have to do. I'm going to turn my sharing off. And back to Zoom. There we go. And sharing is turned off. Okay. Any questions on that last segment? Uh, who's next? There's a lot more you can go into on DMR. 
that's just the tip of the iceberg. You didn't get into any of the uh, software that's on those radios and whatnot, you know, like that GD77 and the MD380. There's a bunch there, but uh, yeah, there's quite a bit the DMR. And, and you know, they're all low cost radios. You can get a GD77 off of uh, eBay for like $85. Sometimes Radiotity runs a special on them. And the original MD380s like uh, Ed and Brian and Paul and all of us had originally, there was a guy named Ty Weaver that had special software that would let you key in talk groups on the fly without having to pre-program it. And I use that GD77. I have uh, Marysville on it. I have statewide Ohio on it. Everything else, I just key it in from the front panel. Makes it so easy, uh, especially when uh, you get into the Stevie switch, because once you log into whatever network, whether it's Fusion or you uh, get into uh, DMR, you just key in the uh, talk group number. And one of the new, on the new release today, uh, it used to be you had to put in the uh, DNS name of the uh, reflector on Fusion. It could be something like uh, n4asa.gotdns.com, port number, just to get into that network. Now they've done a translation for you. You can just type in his room, which is uh, 53532. So they're making constant improvements. And one of the other things they had, I'm gonna, uh, I don't think I can see anybody right now, but on that PyStar dashboard, they've uh, taken a modified PyStar dashboard and ported it over to DB Switch and gives you a lot of status information. Plus, if, you got, if you're on Fusion and you hear somebody talking and they're on a real Fusion radio with uh, the uh, GPS sending out, uh, you know, that's one of the big things they talk about. Oh, I know you're 111 miles away from me. Well, that uh, information that's sent along with their uh, signal, uh, you can click a little green button. It'll show if they have it uh, uh, on their radio. It says GPS, you hit that button, it'll take you to an open source street menu. You can zoom in like Gary's at the corner of Providence and uh, Bridgewater here in town, right where he's living. I mean, he did that to somebody on the Ohio Link drive time in the morning. And the guy says, you ought to play the lottery. You hit my location exactly right. I'm exactly on the corner of this and this. And Gary had to let him know that he wasn't a wizard. He just uh, had a device that would let him zero in exactly where you're at. Now, there is a little latency it'll show where you last were, so it's not exactly real time. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. Now, does anybody else have any more questions for Ken? A lot of stuff. Thank you, Ken. I wanted to just say that. I just got my radio. I just broke the shrink wrap on my uh, 380 here today. Charging it, too. <laughs> I, I can see there's a big wall to climb here, a big learning curve. So, but, uh, well, how long did that first step take, Dean? Was this like months right. of effort to get the shrink wrap off? To uh, actually open the box, um, I bought this radio at Dayton, I guess, uh, three hamfests ago because uh, <laughs> this one was canceled. The one before my basement flooded, so I had three hamfests about two and a half years. It sat on a shelf that I. Okay. Well, we look forward to further developments in this continuing saga. Yeah. What, one thing I did learn today, though, I was uh, noodling around the web, uh, uh, wondering about the programming cable. 